most important thing in business is honesty, integrity, hard work, family. Never forgetting where we came from. most important thing in business is honesty, integrity, hard work, family, never forgetting where we came from. All right, let's do this. Let's roll. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Sunny D here, and you are now ready. I hope you guys are going to buckle up your seat and get ready to take a ride. You're now rolling with the D, and literally... It started as a show on wheels, and now we've rolled our way right into a st into the studio. So I'm excited to be here tonight. I've got tons of great information to share with you guys. I'm rocking my, my little business suit tonight. My little business that just came came from a business presentation, making sure I'm, I'm ready for my close-up. So I'm really excited. The life of an entrepreneur you're rolling with the D, make sure you're using the hashtag RWTD, which stands for, guess what? Rolling with the D, you got it. And make sure you're following us on the Ustream channel, you're sharing our channel with your friends, your family, anybody that you think needs a little boost, needs a little pick-me-up, we're coming to you live. It's October 14th, 2014, 10 p.m. Eastern time. We have this show, we're running Monday through Friday. We'll be here, we'll be your resource. 
will be your go-to, will be that little boost, that little pick-me-up that you need at nighttime. So 10 o'clock, where would you rather be than rolling with the D? I'm excited to be here, excited to bring you some information tonight, excited to be really doing our, our fourth show. Uh, we've been working out the kinks, you know, we've, we've made some discoveries. We're actually recording these. The replays will be available pretty much right after the show on our Ustream channel, but we'll also be sharing them on our YouTube channel. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome. You're now in the Rolling With The D live daily show. Just so you guys know what you can expect, when you come to Rolling With The D, when you come and join in and you get ready to experience this, you know, I'm a hairstylist, that's kind of my profession, that's what I, I went to the trade school, if you will, I went to a Paul Mitchell school in Orlando, Florida. Crazy to think about it, I'm coming up on, you know, a solid 10 years since I left school. So 10 years I've been in the field, in the trenches, I've been building a business. And for those of you out here, I want, I want you to think about, is this show for me, could I find any value in this show? Well, let me ask you this. Are you after financial freedom? Are you after time freedom? Do you want to be able to have choices in life? If you could answer yes to any of those questions and you're in the right place, this is rolling with the D and you're exactly where you need to be. Now me as a hairstylist, maybe you're a hairstylist out there, maybe you're a salon owner, maybe you're a beauty school professional, maybe you haven't quite decided what you want to be when you grow up yet, or maybe you're in an entirely different industry and you're just wondering, what kind of show is this? Well, let me tell you what it's about. You know, our show is really about that person, that inner entrepreneur that I believe everybody has. And when you hear the word entrepreneur, I don't want you get it to get really freaked out. Everybody has the ability, I think, and also everybody has the desire to be an entrepreneur. And when I look at what an entrepreneur is, to me, really, an entrepreneur is a person that wants more out of life, that's willing to put a little bit of their own skin in the game, that's willing to take some risk, that's willing to spend the time, the sweat equity, which we're going to talk about tonight, to actually build something. You know, and that something could be a business that's brick and mortar. It could be an online internet business. You could be involved in a network marketing business that you're trying to build. You could be involved like me in doing a multitude. I'm building a media company. I'm building salons. I'm building an education. I'm really what I'm truly building is an entire platform that reaches into all of those areas. So this is the place for you. What we're going to be sharing here, we're going to be sharing business tips and strategies. We have plays that I'm going to be calling right out of what we call D's Playbook. So we're going to be sharing strategies with you every single day, every time we tune in. We're also going to be talking about you discovering that, that entrepreneur that lives inside of you that you're trying to reach in and you're trying to wake up and you're trying to pull out. And that's what it is. I'm your, I'm your wake up call. You know, I'm your, I'm your nighttime alarm clock. I'm your, I'm your, maybe for some of you, you know, you're a little mentally constipated. I'm your, I'm your enema to really kind of get it out of you, get you woken up. Because your other option at 10 o'clock at night, which is where we're, when we're airing the show right now, is to be sitting in front of the boob tube, you know, turning into a, a vegetable. They call it a couch potato. You could be turned into a couch potato watching, you know, all the tragedies that happen in your local news. Or you could be turning into some other news, some news that's more about you, more about waking you up. And that's what you'll find here. And as I kind of look at the news, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you that you should never pay attention to the news because I believe you should. You should know what's going on, folks. You've got to be informed. I don't want you to be oblivious. I don't want you to think that out of sight, out of mind, whoever sold you that, get your money back because it's not out of sight, out of mind. So I don't want you to be oblivious to what's going on. I mean, I watch the news, but you also have choices. So when you guys start to look at the news, I want you to start to cipher and I want you to use filters. Now, if you've ever shopped on, on websites like either an, like an Amazon type of website or like a shop.com type of website or one of those big shopping portal sites and you're selecting you know, a product that you're looking for, Say you put in computer in the search bar, right? And then it gives you what? 
20,000 results. But if you ever notice off to the left, there's these filters that you can set up. And those filters might be filter by brand name, filter by model type, filter by storage capacity if you're looking for a computer, filter by color, filter by price. So you can set your range. Those are the same kinds of things that we're going to talk about tonight and when we're talking about filters that you need to turn on in your life. Because what I found is some people are on filter. Some people let any kind of crap come their way. Some people let any kind of product into their system, any kind of idea enter, enter their most sacred area in your entire body, which is your, your housing unit. You know, if you were to look at yourself as like a computer, this would be like your Intel inside chip, that brain that you got in there. Some people let anything get involved in it. And then they get what we call mind viruses. And if you think about any kind of virus, what do they also have to fight a virus? You have something called an antivirus. So maybe I'm your antivirus. Maybe Sunny D can be that for you. Maybe Rolling With The D can be that for you because you definitely are gonna need that in today's day and age. So that's who this show is really for. So have you saw that anything in there, maybe something that you could benefit from, something that you could use, you're in the right place. You're Rolling With The D. If you're sharing this show with any of your friends your family i want to make sure that you're using our official hashtag which is rwtd you're following us on facebook you can find me on facebook at sunny dee -E. you can find our salon page on there our company the salon project 1.0 so that's our our mother brand our mothership if you will but you can also find us on twitter if you're on twitter you're going to tweet us at pm the salon pm the salon Make sure you're sharing comments. Make sure you're rolling with the D. So we're here for you guys. And when we look at the show, you know, the hacking, the beauty industry, the business of the beauty industry, that's really my mission with this show. So I'm talking about hacking. And if you think about the definition of a hack, it's the breakthrough that outer surface. It's the breakthrough to cut through noise to help you rise above noise, to help you navigate through noise. And that's what I want to do. You know, we're talking about a range of, of different items and different subjects. But tonight, what I want to really focus on is something that I hear a lot of people say and something that I hear a lot of people misunderstand and not really they're not really sure about, which is this thing called money. Now, there's a lot of myths that go along with money. One of the myths, I'm sure you've heard it, is money is the root of, you got it, you said it in your head, all evil, right? You've heard people say money is the root of all evil. What's something else that you've heard? Money isn't, you got it, everything. You've heard people say that before, money isn't everything. And then what's one of the other things that you've heard people say about money? There's, there's lots of things that people say. Money isn't everything, money is the root of all evil money doesn't buy happiness and so tonight we're going to talk about money and we're going to talk about money from a few different perspectives why i think that you need to place a higher value on money and why you need to keep money moving through your hands you know not sitting on it it's not gonna you put it under a layer of dirt or you put it under your pillow and it grows that's not how it works so we're going to talk a little bit about how money works why I personally try to keep money flowing I try to get money and I try to redistribute it I try to put it to work as soon as possible because I know that money goes out and comes back with more think about that you had you get money you send it out to work for you and then when it comes back there's more and that's what's called currency. And so something kind of unique happened and we're gonna dive into what exactly happened to money. When did money become currency? We're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. So I hope you guys are strapped in. I hope you're excited to be here. I'm super excited to be here, coming to you every single week. After we come back from this break, we're gonna go into that first myth which is money is in everything we're gonna hack that myth we're gonna get that one right out of the table off the table right out of the gate so I hope you guys are tuning in if you want to call in 
and you have a question you want us to talk to you live on the air you can call in the phone number here to the studio is 813-870-3700 that's 813-870-3700 i love to have you call in i'd love to talk to you on the air we've also got people moderating the social stream and the chat room so if you want to leave a message or engage us on chat I'm in the chat room. I've got a screen right here off to my right that I can see your comments. I can see questions that you ask. So I'm excited to be here. Make sure you use the hashtag RWTD. You're rolling with the D. I'm Sunny D. I'm your host, and we'll see you back right after the break. Stay tuned. This break is brought to you by the Salon 1.0, a Paul Mitchell Focus Salon with locations in Tampa, Florida and Oldsmar, Florida. Are you tired of the same old routine when you go to the salon? You know the one I'm talking about. You go into the salon, sit down, and the stylist says, what are you getting done? And then when you leave, you have a shorter version of the same thing you came in with. Then it's time to upgrade your salon experience and visit the Salon 1.0 near you. Our team of salon professionals are trained in the latest techniques in hair cutting, hair coloring, and hair styling, and will offer you customized consultations with every visit. Enjoy our complimentary beverage bar and private shampoo room where you can sit back, relax, and enjoy a hot towel treatment, head massage, and hand massage with every visit. Come in and let one of our Paul Mitchell trained professionals create your new look. Visit us at www.thesalon1.net to schedule your next reservation. That's www.thesalon1.net. You can also reach us in Tampa at 813-280-2953 or in Oldsmar at 813-854-4505. Visit the Salon 1.0 and let us show you what the salon experience is all about. This Take any client when you accept credit cards with Square. There's one low rate for every card. And you see money in your bank account as fast as the next business day. Schedule appointments, send text reminders, and learn how to keep clients coming back with real-time sales reports. Take care of your business with Square. Get started for free at Square.com. good okay a little technical difficulty there but we're back we're good to go so if you guys want to go ahead and call in the number to call in it's 813-870-3700 you can call in now with your questions we are standing by ready to answer your questions ready to talk to you live ready to hack something that you've got on your mind we're ready to go so tonight we're talking about money we're talking about some of the myths of money and some of the myths that you guys have heard you know money isn't everything right that's the first one that I want to talk about you know we've also got you know people that say money is the root of all evil and then you've got people that say money cannot buy you happiness now why do people take that viewpoint why do people say those kind of things? Why, are they, why do they come up with those? Well, here's the thing. They don't understand maybe how money works. So the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, money, is money everything? I don't think money is everything. 
you know, but I definitely value money and I see what it can help do. I mean, for me, you know, it helps keep me out of poverty for one, be able to feed myself, my family for two, be able to create jobs for three. So the thing about money not being everything might be something that, that people say, but because they don't understand how it works. Now, when you're getting ready to approach your business, sometimes people get awkward, they get kind of nervous, they get a little, a little tensed up or a little confused when the subject of money comes up. Now, here's the reason why I believe people will say that and they'll kind of buy into one of these three myths, if not all of them. The money is not everything part because they don't know how it works, but mainly because money is something that you can measure. And when people have to measure things and those numbers, maybe they're not as great as they would like them to be, they get a little, maybe try to hide or maybe not want to reveal. So transparency, I think, is everything. But money is a measurement. So things that people can measure. So when you start looking at money and we start talking about is money everything, well, what do you, what do, you do with money? What is money really? Let's start with what is it? Is it everything? I don't think it's everything, but what is money? Money is a currency. And if you think about anything that's current, if I, I wish I had a bottle of water I could show you. Money as a currency, if you think about a current, a current flows, a current continues to move, a current that's current never stops because if it stops, what happens when a current stops? It becomes stagnant, it becomes still and it, things die and it starts to breed things that are less than valuable. So when we look at money, we're looking at it as a currency. Now something happened, you know, 1970, we were, money used to be backed by gold, right? So it, was, it wasn't a currency, it was a backed by gold, and with that, you've gotten, we got off the gold standard in the 70s. So then this thing, called inflation started to take over. So as inflation started to take over, the value of money started to go down, but it's always been something that we look as a symbol for us to be able to trade goods and services for. So as you're thinking about the actual physical money itself, what is it worth? There's not really a whole ton of value on it in today's terms, but the real thing that money is saying is that somebody is valuing your service or your product and they're willing to exchange their money for that service or product. So when you start thinking about money is in everything, I agree with that to one extent. I don't think that, okay, if you don't have money, you don't have anything, but I think what money represents, the exchange of, is really the value. So I want you to think about when someone tells you money is in everything, what are they buying into? They're buying into the notion that they don't need to have a lot of money or they don't need to have a lot of this currency. I don't need to have a lot of it, but when I, I want to attract a lot of it, and the way that I'm going to attract a lot of it is by creating tremendous value. So I want you to think about how you create value. How do you create value in the marketplace? What products or services do you offer in the marketplace currently that's creating value for people? And how do you increase the value. Now, if you're, this is going to be kind of for that, that employee out there. A lot of times as an employee, what happens as an employee? You trade time, you trade that time for money. Maybe it's in the form of a salary. Maybe it's in the form, you know, of an hourly pay or what we call a wage. Maybe it's in the form of a commission. I want you to start thinking about not so much the actual physical money that you're getting in exchange for the time, but I want you to think about the value that you're exchanging for the money. Because when you start to think about that, if you took that money isn't everything, and I'm gonna give you a slight shift, I'm gonna hack your brain right now, and I'm gonna have you do a little, what we call a word swap. So money isn't everything, value is everything, and value is exchange for this thing that we called money. Now, I don't care what it is. I mean, if, if this was the currency, if it was these expo erasers, if this was the new currency, as much value as I can provide, 
Say I provide X amount of value, I get X amount of erasers. We just do it in the form of greenbacks, right? We call it dead presidents. So you're exchanging value for in return, you're getting currency. So I don't want you to get confused and think about like, oh, it's all about money. It's all about money because it's not. It's all about value. So the next time somebody comes to you and says, oh, yeah, money isn't everything. Say, listen, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make an excuse for why you're not providing value? Do you not have any value to provide? Is that why you're saying money isn't everything? Because I don't believe it is. It's the value. So that's one of the biggest myths about money. You know, when I, I start to think about some of the other myths of money, people say, well, money, money can't buy you happiness. All right, let's talk about that one for a minute. Why do people say that? Why do people say money can't buy you happiness? No one's, no one's ever put a price tag on happiness. Like it, that's like almost one of those things that people say. It's like you didn't have to say it. I mean, that wasn't even, what was the point of even saying that money can't buy you happiness? We know happiness is not for sale. But let me ask you this. When you want to exchange something for money, like value, say you want to go on a vacation or say you needed a new pair of shoes or there was an outfit that you wanted or there was a house or a car, you know, and you saw that as valuable and that thing, whatever that thing was, it made you happy. Or maybe if you're a parent out there and it was an ice cream cone for your daughter or your son and that put a smile on their face, was that not happiness? And how was that created? It was created because somebody provided you value. What did you have to exchange for that value? Quote unquote happiness. You had to exchange money. So I don't want you to get hung up on thinking that you know, there's not, a, there's not a value attached to happiness because money, which is exchanged for value, could provide you happiness. Now, the other thing that I want you to think about is you as an individual, say if you're a business owner right now, right? You, if you have employees or maybe you don't, you have customers. Everybody has a customer. Even if you're a one-man show, you know, you have customers, you have a product, you have a service. We're all constantly trying to exchange for value. We don't always get money for the value though. Sometimes what do we get? We get a mate. Maybe you provided value to another human individual and in return they gave you love. They gave you sex. They gave you their, your new boyfriend or girlfriend or you know, they gave you a diamond ring. They became your, you know, your husband or your wife. So you traded that value, you provided value. So it's not always in the form of money. So when you guys start thinking about money, I don't want you to think of it as just greenbacks. Yes, that is a form of currency, but when you start talking about trading and value, you might get, your currency might come in other ways. With my son, I've got a five-year-old, I've got a 15-year-old. When I trade with them, I'm not looking to get money. If I buy them something, I'm looking to make them happy. You know, if I buy them something or if I give them a hug, not even buy them something, that hug is my currency. The value I provided was the hug and that made them happy. So educating people on like what value is and when it comes to money, that's a big thing. And that's why a lot of people will buy into that misconception or they'll buy into that myth that money can't buy happiness because I think if you think about some of the things we were just were talking about, money is the only thing that can buy happiness. How you look at money is what we need to change. Do you look at it as a currency and just paper with a dead president's face on it? Or do you look at it as a means of trade for value that you can provide? So how do you become more valuable to the marketplace? Ultimately, when you, you talk about financial freedom, and you talk about how do, how do I become financially free? It's simple. If you start thinking about it, you have to provide more value. One of my mentors told me, I hope you guys write this down. Always, always, always do more than you're paid for. Always do more than you're paid for. The other thing that my mentor said, you know, one of the, one of the greats, Jim Rohn, if you guys haven't heard of him, I suggest that you look him up on YouTube, you look up his books, read his books, listen to his audios. He does, he's not here on earth with us anymore. He's passed on. But one of the things he said is if you work hard, 
on your job and you work hard for money and you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. But if you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune. So I want you to think about that because a lot of us were in this proverbial rat race. We're like a hamster on a treadmill. We're just going. We go to work. We come home. On the way we stop, we get a coffee, donut. We get to the red light. You know, you see the people. Before you know it, you can do that track with your eyes closed. You know the exits. You got the lights, traffic lights timed. You know the shortcut. You go to the same place. You know, you get your food out of a box. You live in a box. You go to a box, work in a box, get back in a box, drive back to your other box. So it's kind of that same thing. And we're missing the point of it. You know, we're never increasing value to the marketplace. Therefore, we never get a raise. And it's because of our boss, right? Our boss sucks. They don't, they, don't, they don't appreciate me. Well, it's not your boss is saying they don't appreciate you. The market is saying, you know what? You're, whatever you're providing, it's not that valuable. Because that's the direct reflection of the value you're providing. So if you provide low value, you get low pay. And we're going to talk about performance when we get to the last piece on money. But I want you to think about that. You work hard at your job, you will make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you will make a fortune. I don't know about you, but I'm interested in making a fortune. So I continually work on me every single day. And you have to, you have to work on yourself. So when we talk about our resources, what are those resources? That's called exercise for the mind. That's called exercise for for your self-development, your self-improvement. And rolling with the D really is birthed out of that expression because I know that there's other people out there as I travel and I teach and they're interested in working on themselves. They're interested in how do I have a great life? How am I able, how am I able to go to the next level? You know, so we got to get rid of some of these, some of these misconceptions. We got to get rid of some of these money myths. We've already tore down two of them. When we come back, we're going to dive into a third one, and we're going to talk about the different levels that you can perform at, and I'm actually going to show you guys what the compensation looks like based on your performance. So for some of you that are looking for a raise, it's kind of like that one song, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for a raise in all the wrong places. You're looking in your manager's pocket. You're looking in your boss's pocket. You're looking everywhere but the place I'm going to share with you when we come back. So if you are out there and you want to call in, make sure you call in. We'd love to hear from you. 813-870-3700. You can call in. We got Patman. He's sitting by, ready to take your phone call. He actually, he told me before the show, he cannot wait, cannot wait to take your phone call, to talk to you, to let us hack one of, one of your challenges, let us hack one of your problems. Make sure you're using the hashtag RW. TD, if you're on a social stream or in the chat room, we've got moderators standing by to engage with you. And when we come back, we're going to go into that last myth, that last myth about the evilness of money. Is money really dirty, evil stuff? We're going to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about your performance and your compensation and show you how you can get a raise in the next 24 hours. So stay tuned. We'll be back after a break. You're rolling with the D and we're tackling and we're hacking money. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This break is brought to you by Dilution Co. Are you ready to simplify your life with modern, real-time accounting? Then you're going to want to visit Michael and the team at Dilution Co. They offer a variety of services from accounting, bookkeeping, taxes, tax planning, and financial planning for individuals and businesses to help save you time and money. They utilize the latest innovations in cloud-based technology to really help you grow your business and they can adapt to any platform. They are truly accountants for the digital age and will keep you up to date with the latest strategies, 
and solutions. Get in touch with Delusia & Co. at DelusiaCo.com, also at 813-252-0-TAX. That's 813-252-0-TAX. Delusia & Co. Simplify your life with modern, real-time accounting. This break is brought to you by 1.0 Express, a Paul Mitchell focus salon and professional training salon. Are you a professional stylist who loves professional? We're back. All right. How's it going out there? Hope you guys are hanging with us. You are now rolling with the D. Just kind of looking through our our stream here been dropping in the RWTD hashtag live we're here Monday through Friday we're here with you live hope you guys are excited to be here love to hear from you 813-870-3700 we're at the rolling with the D daily show where we are literally piece by piece we are taking apart we're hacking we call it hacking we're hacking the beauty industry one piece at a time I know when I was in beauty school one of the things that they never talked about really was the the money you know so today we've been talking about money we've been talking about some of the myths of money we've been talking about how you can dispel those myths I've been giving you a little enema for your brain if you, your brain may be a little constipated I'm, I'm in there I'm cleaning some of the stuff out you're in the daily show you're here we're in the studio on October 14th it's a it's a Tuesday night why are you here is what I want to know guys why are you here please if you are in the chat stream be active don't be a lurker don't be just sitting there you know looking and, and hoping and poking you can you can share with us you can share some some questions that you have. I'm sending out tweets in there. I'm hoping to interact with you. I want to see what you guys are up to, what you're what you're seeing, what's going on. So we're here in the studio. We've been hacking through money. We talked about some of the myths of money. Money isn't everything. We talked a little bit about that. Money can't buy you happiness. I think we're pretty clear on where happiness comes from and what money is. We talked about money became a currency. When we moved off the gold standard, money became a currency. And if you look at this, you can see it's always moving. This is what currency does. The minute your money becomes still, it dies. So when I get money coming into my business, I try to get it out there as soon as possible. And I'm going to share something with you. I was, I was listening to uh, Bloomberg Radio today, listening to a little update on the financial statistics of a company. And it was pretty interesting to find out when a company is looked at as a as an asset, a true asset, how do you know you have one? You know, when you have reoccurring revenue that if you walk away from it, it continues to flow. That's an asset. So they were talking about how Steve Ballmer, you know, he just bought the LA Clippers. Steve Ballmer was one of the big time executives at Microsoft. So he retired. What did he decide to do? Well, he's a He's, he's a billionaire. He's got a few billies in his account. So he decided to go off and buy a basketball team. Why not? You know, what else is he going to do? He's in, his, he's in his golden years. Went out and paid billions for a basketball team. Now, when he bought the basketball team, people were wondering, you know, did he overpay for it? What he looked at was he looked at basketball, the business that he knows, the industry he came from is technology. So he came from Microsoft. He's looking at the LA Clippers basketball team like he would look at a technology company. I look at my business the same way. It's a platform to him. It's a platform to distribute content, to distribute goods and services. Yeah, he's got you know five guys running up and down the court chasing, chasing the basketball around and putting it in a hole, but he looks at it as a, as a technology and a distribution company. I'm going to take this as great advice, what I heard today, because what he looked at was the recurring revenue and the multiple that you would times that by. 
So that's where he looked at the value of a company. So if you have recurring revenue, I know in our business, we build a clientele and that client, that guest, they come back every six weeks. That's called recurring revenue. So you look at the top line and when you value a business, you value your business, I want you to think about your top line. Maybe right now, you're bringing in, well just to keep the numbers easy, maybe you're bringing in a thousand you know, dollars a day. Right, so if you're bringing in a thousand dollars a day and you work five days a week, that's five thousand dollars a month. That five thousand dollars, or I'm sorry, yeah, five thousand dollars a week times four weeks, that's twenty thousand dollars a month. Right, so you're looking at recurring revenue. So that cycle of guests, maybe they're on an every six week basis. So in six weeks, maybe you're gonna see, we'll say, thirty thousand dollars of revenue come through and that recycles itself. So you've got a $30,000 recurring revenue stream that comes through your business. You take that number and you start thinking about that. What is that worth to somebody? Well, if you take my business, say I have you know, five people doing that, that becomes $150,000 of recurring revenue that comes through every you know, six weeks. And then I start to look at that, dividing that into the 52 weeks in a year we're now starting to talk about so a serious recurring revenue stream. That's an asset. Your goal as a business owner, whether you're a stylist, whether you're a traditional brick and mortar, you own the salon, or whether you're thinking about owning the salon, is you need to build an asset where you have that recurring revenue come in. But it's not gonna happen if you guys are buying into the BS, which I mean, when I say BS, I know what some of you are thinking. I'm talking about the belief systems that are fed to us. Money isn't everything. BS. Money is the, doesn't buy you happiness. BS. Money is the root of all evil. That's the next one. BS. Is money really the root of all evil? Now, who would say something like that? Probably anyone that would work on any of these myths probably is somebody who has been conditioned to believe that money is the root of all evil. Well, let me, let me think about that. There's this guy out there, I don't know if you ever heard of him, his name is William Gates, Bill Gates. You know, he is eradicating diseases all over the world because he has the funds to do it. That doesn't sound like evil to me. What about my boy at Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg? How many millions of dollars is he contributing to, to crush this Ebola, right? The Ebola is breaking out everywhere. It's hitting us in the United States. It's hitting everybody everywhere. Why, where did, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Oh yeah, that's right. Because money is the root of all evil. No, I don't think it's the root of all evil. I think the fact that he has that money, he's able to do that, that's actually the root of all goodness, if you think about it. What could you do? What could you do if you had undisposable income? What about my girl Oprah? What did she do? She went over to Africa and built a school. It's kind of funny that how that whole story happened. She's just kicking it at Madiba, you know, the, the late Nelson Mandela goes by Madiba. She's hanging out at Madiba's house. What does she do? She's just kicking around some ideas. She had 29 meals with this man, right? This Madiba who spent a big chunk of his life in prison for freedom and for rights. He fought for it and went to prison for what he believed in. She got to spend a month with him. She had 29 meals while she stayed at his house. And they would sit there over the meals and talk about things. And just speaking off the cuff, she's like, yeah, you know, we should start a school over here. Next thing you know, the next day, he's making, he's making a meeting happen. And the meeting comes together. And then they start a school over there to help put people through education, to help people learn about entrepreneurship, to help people learn about having a business, to help people learn about stimulating economy, to help people learn about growing. Would she have been able to be in that position? If she didn't have money as one of her main goals, not to get it and hold on to it, because trust me, we all got the same ticket on the way out and it doesn't involve checking any bags. You go out with nothing, folks. So I don't think that you're trying to hoard money for what? Now, some of people are going to say, well, what about the terrorists? You know, they're, they're, they use money, right? They use money to cause, cause mayhem and cause destruction all over the world. That's true. But guess what? We use money to kill them. You know, we use money to go after the terrorists. We use money to fight terrorism. 
So money could be used as an instrument of evil, but let's kill that whole myth about money is the root of all evil. So what I want to talk to you guys now about, you know, as, you, as you're thinking about money, well, who gets paid in this world? I'm going to tell you right now that every one of you has a dream, and that dream might be a million-dollar dream, but here's the problem. You got a minimum wage work ethic. You got a million dollar dream. You got a great idea. But here's the problem. You only work eight hours a day on your dream. Here's the problem. You, you're a time puncher, right? You go in, you punch the clock, right? You're sitting around watching the clock. You will not achieve. You can have the dream. You can have the million dollar dream all you want. You will not in this world, from what I've seen and experienced up to my little point in time where I'm at in life, you are not going to achieve a million dollar dream with a minimum age, a minimum wage work ethic, folks. That is not going to happen. I'm here to give you the truth. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your head. The people that, that make those, those people that I just mentioned, the Mark Zuckerbergs who created the Facebook, right? It used to be called the Facebook, the Oprah Winfrey's, you know, she's got her own network called own network, right? You've got Bill Gates who created Microsoft. Do you think they created that with a minimum wage work ethic? I don't think so. Minimum wage, it doesn't exist in their vocabulary. So if you're working a nine to five right now on your way to your dream, that's okay. But if you're working a nine to five, like that's your out, like that's your end game plan, you got to rethink. I'm here to wake you up and tell you that you got to rethink because there is no future in that there is no million dollar dream that's ever come into reality with a minimum wage work ethic and so what i want to do is i want to take you through what it looks like what the level of your performance looks like and it, and it equates to in your wage or in your pay or in your salary number one how do people get paid well you've got people that work for an hourly pay that's one way of getting paid you got people that work on a salary that's another way of getting paid. You also have people that work on a commission. Now, if I had a choice to pick one of the three before I started to educate myself and learn about the different methods of getting paid, I would have thought hourly because I was raised just like most of you guys are raised. First thing I want to find out is how much am I getting paid an hour? Oh, is it $10 an hour? Is it $8 an hour? Is it $15 an hour? And then we think well, we struck it big when you get the double digits, right? And you're like, oh man, I'm banking now. That's the mindset that we're all conditioned into. That's the plan. That's how it's set up from the beginning. As that happens, as that plan unfolds, then I stumble into this thing called the salary. So a salary says, well, we're going to give you X amount of dollars for the year and you're going to go and grind. You're going to put in your 40 hours a week, but you've got that locked in salary. So some weeks you got to put in 50 hours, but you got that locked in salary. There's not an overcompensation. But when you work back to the wage person, what does the wage person do? They're looking for overtime, right? They're looking for that extra 15, 30 minutes like it's going to make a difference in their life. It's, it's not going to make a difference. Then you have my favorite way to compensate is performance pay. Performance pay, usually the word that they use in the marketplace, if you're a stylist, you're going to become real familiar with this. If you're in any kind of sales job, which everybody is, you'll become real familiar. It's called commission, which means you make a sale and then you get a percent of that sale as a commission. That commission could range from anywhere from 1% to 99%. So that's the, that's the idea behind commission. But here's the deal. You don't make a sale. You don't make a commission. That's fair. Why would you get compensated for not doing anything? That's not fair. That's called a handicap. Now, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to do that out there because there's plenty of businesses. And I will tell you, as a business owner, other business owners might not like me saying this, but our goal is to, to keep the amount that goes out and pay as small as possible. Now, when we work as a commission, I like writing big commission checks. The reason why is because I know people are performing and if we have a deal, if it's a split, 
I know if they're making money, I'm making money. If they're not working, they're not getting paid, I shouldn't get paid either. But on the other hand, if you're looking for you know, the handout, which would be the minimum wage, forget about the million dollar dream. That's all I wanna do. I wanna make sure we're clear on that before I show you the numbers here. I don't want you to think that working the nine to five is gonna get you the million dollar dream. And as an entrepreneur, like everybody has that little entrepreneurial fire in them, you should think about performance-based pay. How do I get locked up in a performance-based pay job? Because if you're like me, if you're a go-getter, that's the only way I would ever wanna get paid. I will never take an hourly, because if I take an hourly, if I take a salary, I'm gonna be underpaid for the rest of my life. Because you have to think about the goal of the business. Remember, that payroll for wage and salary, the goal of a business is to keep that as small as possible. Now, I know you got people lobbying, whoa, minimum wage, raise it, raise it to $10 an hour. That ain't gonna change anything. You can raise it to $50 an hour. Guess what? Prices of all the products and services, all that did was make all of that stuff more expensive. We're not gonna sell more products. You're not gonna get rich off of it because now everything that you had coming in is still going out just as fast. So raising the minimum wage, that's one of the recommendations. I'm not a part of that decision, but I'll tell you right now that it's not for you guys. That is not gonna benefit you. So if you're thinking right now you're making nine bucks an hour and they're about to raise it to 10 and that's gonna be the answer to all your problems, forget that, get it out of your head. That's stinking thinking, that's a myth. So here's what I want you to think about. You're gonna get compensated on performance and performance only matters in these categories. The first category you have, I'm gonna to go to our whiteboard you hop into the playbook here. So this is coming right out of the playbook, guys. This is where we're at. All right, we'll call this first play. So we're talking about performance. So number one is what kind of performer are you? If you're out there, I can see you, right? Raise your hand if you think you're doing a good job, right? So some of us, oh, I'm doing a good job, right? Okay, awesome. So here you are, you have good job. And then some of you are thinking that, you know, I do a good job. What does a good job look like? I show up on time to work. I punch in, punch out, take my lunch break. People come in, they want to buy stuff. I take care of the transaction. That's a good job. That's a good job. And then you have to look at what does the pay look like for somebody doing a good job? Well, unfortunately, for somebody that's doing a good job, your compensation is poor pay. So people that are doing a good job, you're gonna get poor pay. In today's marketplace, that's, that's what you get rewarded for doing a good job. So keep up the bad work. Next opportunity you have from good job is you have your doing, well, I don't wanna do a good job anymore. Everybody's now not wanting to do a good job, so we're gonna bump it up. Now we're gonna do a great job. So now you're gonna get a pat on the back. You're doing a great job and you're, you're going above and beyond. Now you're actually showing up for work five minutes early. You're staying five minutes late. You're actually approaching the customer when they come in the door. There's an idea. You actually approach them and you try to make a sale. So when you do a great job, guess what? Your pay goes up. It becomes good. That's the environment we live in. And no more good job. Good job, poor pay. Great job, you get good pay. So now you're getting good pay. You're liking that, that's feeling good to you, but you want more money. So now we're gonna get into the top two levels. And in our company, these are the two levels we look for. We really try to extinguish people that don't perform above these levels. Because this is the mediocre right here, in my opinion, this is where you live. And I know if you're watching this show, if you're taking time out of your schedule and your life to watch this, you don't wanna be caught in these areas. So the next one we're moving up to is gonna be excellent. So when you do an excellent job, you're now getting great pay. But some of you don't want to just get great pay, do you? I know I don't. What does great pay look like? Great pay is a living. You're making a decent living. You're not starving, but you're making a decent living. The, le the next level that I'm going to take you to is the ultimate level where you're going to go and you're gonna start performing 
at an outstanding, doing an outstanding job. What does an outstanding job get you? The outstanding job gets you exactly where you want to be, which is going to be the excellent pay. Put two cha-chings on there. So the people that are doing excellent pay, you know who they are. You've been in your workplace. You know who's out there, who's performing, the hustlers, the grinders, the show-ups, the people that are like, they don't have, the vocabulary doesn't exist in their, in their dialogue menu. It's not my job. That just doesn't exist. So that's where you need to be. So some of the characteristics are inside of you. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about a couple of those characteristics, how you can identify, are you in that outstanding job? Have you discovered that entrepreneur? Because I'll tell you right now, the entrepreneurs are performing in the outstanding job category. So make sure if you have a question, a comment, we're coming in. You call us in at 813-870-3700 using the hashtag RWTD. You're rolling with the D. We'll see you when we come back from break, and we're going to show you a couple characteristics that you can take to the bank if you're doing an outstanding job. So we'll see you after the break. Stick with us. Training, Or are you a salon owner who wants your stylist to receive the best professional training and become more well-rounded? Then you need to visit 1.0 Express, a professional training salon, where we offer a variety of weekly mini classes and workshops that range in areas such as hair cutting, hair coloring, hair styling, and business building. 1.0 Express, a professional training salon. Visit us at www.thesalon1.net for our upcoming schedule of classes and workshops, or call us at 813-870-3700. That's 813-870-3700. 1.0 Express, a professional training salon for salon professionals who love professional training. We'll see you there. This break is your morning, your job, your activities throughout the day. They all take a toll on you. Then you have to do it all again and again and again. Sometimes you need an extra charge. Awake energy shots give your body the boost it needs when you can't afford a letdown. Take charge. Get awake energy shots exclusively at shop.com. Alright guys, we are back. We're coming in. We're bringing, we're bringing the daily show to a close. I love spending time with you guys. I hate when we have to say goodbye, but it's about that time. So I just want to leave you with a couple things before we officially say goodbye for the today and then we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. But I want to talk about that outstanding person. That outstanding person, that's the person we're trying to reach with this show. That's the entrepreneur within. So if you see something and, and you know like you don't have the vocabulary in your head, it's not my job. If you're the type of person that you, know, you don't want to leave the workplace until everything is done, that's the outstanding level of production. The reward for that outstanding level of production is the marketplace will acknowledge you for the value that you're providing the workplace. So it's not looking for a raise. The thing that you want to use as an outstanding individual is you want to look for gaps in the organization that you can fill. That's how you become valuable. If you can fill a gap, if you can fill a problem, if you can fill a gap in a workplace, that's a characteristic of one of these guys. These are outstanding performers. That's what we're talking about. So my assignment for you is to go out there Start looking for gaps that you can fill. Start looking for needs in your organization. And if you're not in an organization, look at an organization that you want to be a part of. Approach them as one of those outstanding individuals. Let them know there's gaps that you want to fill. Because I tell you, as a business owner, I am constantly 
looking for people that can fill gaps in my organization. Every organization, I don't care if you're a brand new startup or you're a Fortune 500 company that's on the public stock market, every organization has gaps. Every single one has gaps. If you can become one of those gap fillers, one of those gap fillers, you can become a killer and you'll start demanding the kind of value that you want to get out of the marketplace. So that's really what this episode was about. So I hope you're able to take some of those money myths, squash them, throw them up, forget about them. Money isn't everything. It's the only thing that gets rewarded is the reward for the value that you provide. So I want you to think about that. Money can't buy you happiness. No, but happiness is provided from value that you provide. We just use money to trade for it. Money is not the root of all evil. No, it's not because it can provide good to fight evil. So when you think about that, that should put money in a different perspective. Go out there, live an outstanding life, be an outstanding performer because that's the only thing that the market's going to acknowledge. I can't wait to see you guys. Tomorrow night will be right here, 10 p.m. You're rolling with the D. Make sure you're sharing this with your friends, with your family, following us, getting involved in the chat room. Share it with your friends. Let people know. If you have questions, follow up. Tomorrow night show, we're going to hack a brand new topic and it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see you guys in the live stream. Hashtag RWTD from 1.0 Studio. It's been a pleasure. My name is Sunny D. You've been rolling with a D and we can't wait to see you soon. Take care, guys.